Here at Bioneers, we cover a lot of ground. We try to address the broad range of the most important issues of the day, but we also feel very strongly that ultimately none of the key issues of our time can be addressed in isolation. Just as we are all connected, so too are the challenges we must overcome. How we have treated the earth is linked to how our societies have treated women and girls and first peoples and people of color. Another aspect of this universal interdependence is that what we work for in the outer world is a reflection of how we feel inwardly, how we care for ourselves and how we express ourselves. Movements against oppression have no choice but to voice outrage and to resist the violence against them. But those movements that at their core can also tap into love and compassion, as we just saw so amazingly with climbing poetry, and express themselves with power and vitality, but also with care, empathy, and grace, have a much better chance of succeeding and of creating a desirable society than those based purely on rage, as justified as that rage might be. If a movement isn't associated with some great art and music, something in it is lacking. Our final, <laughs> yes, thank you. Our final presenter here this weekend is someone who so beautifully ties together so many of the themes we've grappled with these past few days and who embodies in her very being some key solutions to the tremendous problems we face. We've been wrestling with the oppression and resistance of First Peoples and other disenfranchised groups throughout the world this is one of her key themes. We have discussed the rising up of women to demand equality and liberation from violence, and we heard from the eloquent Kevin Powell yesterday on how to detoxify masculinity. She is a passionate warrior for women, but one who seeks to heal men as well. And no one articulates better than she does that healing our planet is profoundly linked to healing our relationships and our own wounded psyches. She's also a perfect model of that marriage of activism and artistic expression I was talking about, which she says she learned from her amazing pioneer mother, a woman I'm honored to call friend, Pat McCabe, or Woman Stands Shining. I was realizing, yeah, I was realizing that, you know, part of the gift of Bioneers having this longevity is getting to see people evolve and witness people who really feel like they become family to grow and flourish. And I've had that great honor with Woman Stands Shining or Pat McCabe, sometimes known now as the Water Woman, and also with Lila June. Lila June is, first of all, an extraordinary poet. We knew she was a power to be reckoned with when, a few years back, she blew away the audience and won the Bioneers Youth Poetry Slam. But then she totally upended the whole hierarchical structure of it by refusing to accept her winning prize money. Instead, sharing it with all the other young poets. <laughs> right? Yeah, the poetry slam and annual tradition has never been the same since, but is better than ever thanks in part to her mini revolution. Her latest book, which I am just savoring and want to commend to you, is called Lifting Hearts Off the Ground, Declaring Indigenous Rights in Poetry. And it's this magnificent creative mashup of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples with Contemporary Poetry. Lila of Diné, Cheyenne, and European lineages is also an anthropologist, educator, and community organizer who has inspired audiences around the world with her mix of dynamic poetry, powerful eloquence, and radiant presence as she shares a transformative message of personal, collective, and ecological healing. She draws from both the traditional Diné teachings she learned growing up and her studies at the cutting edges of modern thought, including in human ecology at Stanford. 
What I especially love about Lila is her quest for deep solutions at the very core of our being. If we are going to be able to help mend the broken heart of our world, it will be because of emerging powerful young women like Lila. You're in for a real treat. Please join me in welcoming a great voice, a great mind, a great artist, a great healer, and a great heart to close our keynotes this weekend, Lila June. Oh, yeah, <laughs> wonderful to be here. Thank you all for, for being with me today. Uh, I'll introduce myself in my native tongue. Um, Taos, New Mexico, Dain Nasha, Shema E. Pat McCabe, Wolye, Aro, Shije, E. Thomas Johnston, Wolye, Akut Ego, Dene Astan, initially. What I just said there was, Yat E. Can you guys say Yat E? That is a merging of the sky and the earth, because Ya comes from Yadethil, which talks about the sky realm and the sacredness of that realm. And at e talks about the earth. It literally means little girl, but we're saying this, the earth is a sacred little girl. So when you say ya at e, you're merging and combining the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine embodied by the sky and the earth. And you're marrying them together. And you're saying, look, here we are, where the sky kisses the earth, where all life sprouts. So that's how we say hello. And so when you say Ya'at Eh, you are affirming the sanctity of men and the sanctity of women. And we also affirm the sanctity of non-gender conforming peoples. Everyone is, everyone is sacred, sacred. So that's a little bit about what my talk's gonna be about today is uh, how do we honor the sanctity of ourselves truly and how do we uh, affirm that in everyday practice. Um, but first I want to do a little hip hop, is that okay? Okay, okay. Just for fun, you know? Because we've been hearing a lot of speeches, good speeches, um, and sometimes you need some music. All right. <laughs> all given sacred duties to this land. Take care of Mother Earth and she will help you understand that everything we need is in the palm of her hands. No need to drill, mine, conquer, or extract. With faith in the Creator, we will blaze a brand new path. When we let go of fear, the greed turns into laughter. Unity of all people, that is what we're after. Cruising down the red road with sweet grass on my dashboard. Used to drug and drink, but now I'm sober, now I'm faster. Sharp as a tacky told me, can't hold me back now. <laughs> I just want to build a new world for my children with love, prayer, and unity. This nation is rebuilding up from the ash of genocide and division. Red, black, yellow, white as one. That's the vision. Every race participates in this new beginning. Sacred is the masculine and sacred is the feminine. Infinite, indigenous, continuous, deliberate. Nothing can stop the people once they got their intention set. Some people say that the land can be owned. <laughs> Some people say that the land can be owned. But deep in our hearts, we know it isn't so, because we don't even own this flesh or this bone. Now, we can't take it with us on the soul's journey home. Now, the only thing we keep is the lessons that we know. So when we wake from the slumber to remember we are one, one beautiful people under one beautiful sun, we must also release all claims to the earth, because she don't belong to us. We belong to her. Yo, 
Yo, Mother Earth was meant to be a place where we could learn. We pray to Jezapa for a blessing on the world. We practice Satyagraha because violence doesn't work. We pray for those who are injured and those who injure. Unconditional prayers for the whole wide world. Sun dance year round. Yeah, we let the sage burn because when we pray for the people, we will start to understand what it means to be true woman, what it means to be true man. Cradled in the arms of the sky and the sand, just a strand in the tapestry of the master plan. Because together there is nothing, yeah, we cannot achieve. Together there is nothing that we cannot achieve. Can I hear you guys say that? Together there is nothing that we cannot achieve. Together there is nothing that we cannot achieve. Together there is nothing that we cannot achieve. Achieve, find love, find healing, find unity. Ho jo na hasli, ho jo na hasli, ho jo na hasli, ho jo na hasli. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. We are, we are, we will always be stronger together. We will always be stronger. My elders tell me, when you go into battle, never go alone. <laughs> so, you know, as a Diné woman, I have to honor my, my traditions. And my elder, Dr. Larry Emerson, who's a Diné man from Shiprock, once told me, Lila, whenever you go outside the four sacred mountains, because this is my homeland. Oh, where'd it go? You yeah. saw it. There's four sacred mountains that we live inside of. They're in what is now called Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah, but it's really uh, Denetra, you know, those, those are new words. Um, and they said, anytime you go outside of the four sacred mountains, wherever you go, honor the indigenous peoples where you go. Follow their ceremonies, follow their way of life, follow what they have to say, because they know the songs of that land you know, so the Miwok people, the Ohlone people, they understand oceans, right? I'm a desert Indian. I don't know about oceans. For this reason, I wanted to share my stage time with the local Miwok and Ohlone peoples um, because they should speak first. And before I spoke today, I, I asked them if it would be okay for me to speak on their land because these women, these women leaders, are the ones that I follow when I come to this area. And I wanted them to say whatever the heck they want to say. So please welcome Kim Diocampo, Je uh, Dreama Jeff, and Canyon Sayers Roots. Chihima, good day. With so much of our conversation being about social justice, I just want us all to be mindful that the first injustice of this country was the theft of it. We, we just have a little time, so I'm just going to say to all of us, Shoktiton Onikuti, we are all related. Mitrixis Maniko Onixen, Kanitma Partaku Mewe West Point. I am a woman from the West Point Roundhouse, and my, I'm from the Jeff family. Um, I'll let. Mish oh, to our sisters. Mishmin Tulhis, Conrakot Canyon, Coyote Woman, Sarah's Roots from Indian Canyon Nation. There's so many conversations around how indigenous peoples have wisdom and knowledge of these lands and these spaces and these territories. And it is so very important that we acknowledge the indigenous peoples of these lands in today's post-colonial settler society. So the responsibility is upon you. You are the pioneers and we will go forward. Learn about the native peoples of whose land you are on and include them in the decision-making processes as we go forward for the solutions of the future. Thank you, Lila June, thank you, Auntie, thank you, 
relation. Can I hear a big O? Oh. Oh. We are the future and all of us together. Ama piritakawas. Can you say that? Ama piritakawas. You just said a Mutsun word for people of this land. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. I really, I really can't speak until they speak. So uh, thank you for, for honoring them. Uh, my talk is called something like um, Healing Women and the Earth Through a Dene Lens. And what I just did, I think, is, is how you do that. Uh, Dene people, we, we, um, we have to follow. Yes, we are indigenous to the Americas, but that doesn't mean we can go to uh, Seattle and just walk in like we own the place, even though sometimes we do that. But you gotta stop, Dene brothers and sisters out there. I know you're out there. Can you raise your hand if you're Dene? Yeah, there they are. <laughs> you're on Miwok land, you're on Ohlone land. Let's follow Dr. Larry Emerson's advice. Um, and so I wanted to honor them. I think that that's how we do it. And, and Dreema, my, my dear sister who spoke, uh, she said, if you want to know the health of a place, look at the health of its indigenous peoples. If they are not healthy, that is the state of the land. And so that's a challenge to all of us to really, truly uh, practice. So whenever I go to places, you know, I have a lot of privilege now. I'm, I'm a national speaker all of a sudden. Not sure how that happened. I, I go places. I first ask, who's the native peoples of this land? Am I allowed to come? Yeah, Bioneers invited me, but did the Miwok invite me? Did the Ohlone invite me? And so when I go there, I ask them, you know, may I speak? And then I sell my books, and I give the proceeds to their programs. So this is ways that, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is something we can all do. We can all honor wherever we go. And, and there's a Shumi land tax here in Oakland area. It's called the Sagorate Land Trust. And uh, indigenous female-led, uh, Auntie Kim is one of the board directors. And this allows you to pay a percentage of your tax, of your, of your uh, property tax to them, to the Ohlone people. And it's voluntary, right? You don't have to do it, but this is a way that you can pay your rent for living on their land. And all of that money goes towards restoring the trout, goes towards building roundhouses, goes towards their cultural programs. So this is something we all need to be doing is being sensitive to where we are. So with that taken care of, uh, let me go ahead and say what, what little I would like to say on this topic. Um, women, female identifying folks, we are sacred. It took a long time for me to understand that I was sacred. I started to do drugs when I was 11 years old. I became an alcoholic at age 14. I was raped from a very young age onward up until even very recently. Rape is defined as something you do because it's a have to, not something you really want to do. My elders defined rape that way because they wanted me to know I was not a slave. I did so many things because I had to. Maybe because there was alcohol involved and I was drunk and I wasn't even there to make a choice. Maybe because my boyfriend told me it would make me happy for my birthday if you would do this with me. That's a have to, that's not a want to, that's guilt. Maybe it's when a woman came to me and said, um, I want your body. And I said, oh, I don't really want to, but she took me into her dorm room um, when I was on drugs anyways and, and did what she wanted to me. So it's not just men who rape. <laughs> Um, and it's just, just women who get raped, right? Our brothers get raped all the time. 
if it's a have to, not a want to? How many of us have done something because we had to, not because we genuinely want to, right? Wow, you guys are brave. Woo, that's beautiful. Because every time you raise your hand, you help other people know that they're not alone. So rape is a paper-thin illusion tactic to get women to hate themselves. Women, we have this uh, womb, and not to be too heteronormative, but we do have some kind of agreement as we incarnate in this vessel to, to keep this womb ready for children. And if we get raped, we feel like we broke that covenant. We feel like we, we broke our most sacred task here. And so rape, if you blame yourself, which is what I did, oh, I shouldn't have walked in that room, I, shouldn't, I should have said no louder, I shouldn't have drank that night, I should have, would have, would have, would have, right? It's always my fault. If you blame yourself for that, you think you cooperated in it, right? So all the time I thought I was co cooperating in these sad things until I didn't really think I had a choice anymore. Sometimes I would jump the gun, right? I was the promiscuous one. But what was I really doing? I was saying, uh, this is gonna happen anyways. I'd go to people's rooms, i said, say, I already know what's gonna happen here. I might as well be the one to make the first move because then I'm choosing it, then I'm in power. You know, but that's still not what we were born for, and it's not our fault. So, brothers, uh, male identifying folks, there is also things that harm the men. What harms the men, because they also have a covenant. Their covenant is to protect the sacred, right? So how does coyote, how does the dark spirit get the man to hate himself? It hurts the women in his family. A little boy watching domestic violence, that domestic violence is just a, as much an assault on the woman as it is on her sons. Because those sons carry that on their back and say, oh, I failed to protect. I should have called the cops. I should have hit him with the fire extinguisher. I should have done this. I should have protected. It's always my fault. It's not your fault, brothers. It's not your fault. What happened was not your fault. And to know that is to reclaim your worthiness, your sanctity. So I'd like everyone to, if you want to, no pressure, repeat after me. I am good. I am good. I am sacred. I am sacred. I belong. I belong. How many of us was that kind of hard to say? A few of us, right? We want to get to a place where we can say that and we mean it fully. And coyote is always, no, not the coyote that Canyon's a part of. Different cultures have different ideas of coyote. She's the clown coyote. She's awesome, I love coyote. Coyote, I'm, this is another definition of coyote, the trickster that is willing to harm. Maybe I won't even use coyote. Let's just say the, the, the spirit that's willing to harm, the spirit that's enslaved the world, the spirit that worked through the US government to destroy and annihilate indigenous peoples. That spirit wants nothing more than for us to hate ourselves. Because the day that we hate ourselves is the day that we say, Creator, I'm not worthy of you. I'm not worthy of you speaking through me today. I'm not worthy of you writing music through me today. I'm not worthy of you being in my life. So if we say, I'm a disgrace, which is what rape makes women think, right? I'm a disgrace. Or if a young boy watches his mom get beat up, or maybe he's raped by another man and feels less of a man because of that, not your fault, not your fault, then you say, I'm a disgrace. You know, every time we say, I'm a disgrace, we are also saying, creator, I'm not worthy of you today. So how do we get to the point where Lila June is an alcoholic drug addict who hates herself, who wears sunglasses every day, 
chain smoking cigarettes, to Lila June, who's wearing her regal bomb, beautiful, um, <laughs> rug dress, turquoise, blingin', knows who she is, loves herself, believes she is worthy. How do, how do we get, how do we get from here to there? Whew, that's the healing journey. That's the healing journey. In, in our language we say, sacred mountains, I am your child. So I'm out of time, but I hope and I pray, this is my one little prayer, that each and every one of you can love yourselves deeply and know that you are worthy. You are worthy of all those dreams you hold inside. You are worthy and you are more than up to the task. And if you let creator work through you, he, she, it would love that because the people need you now. So please make that journey that I had to make. Go through your life and reject every single lie that the dark spirit told you about you. And tell yourself that you are sacred, you are good, you belong, you have purpose. I love each and every one of you and all the people listening who aren't in this room. We love you and we want you to take up your staff again, the staff of who you really are, and fight for a, for a creation because you are all, all those warriors. So fight with me and have a beautiful day. Thank you.